Scott Maxwell writes the Taking Names column for the Orlando Sentinel. Three times a week, his column focuses on the interesting, funny, and sometimes maddening things that make Florida, Florida. He's had plenty of material to work with this past week. And Scott Maxwell, welcome back to Florida this week. Great to have you here. It is a pleasure to be with you again, Rob. Scott, the pollsters got it wrong. Why do you think the polls were so off this time here in Florida? Yeah, I've almost gotten to the point where I don't really waste as much time trying to figure out why they got it wrong as much as I just acknowledge that they did get it wrong. And this is not the first time they've gotten it wrong. Uh, they got it wrong, as we all know, uh, back in 2016, really in overwhelming fashion. I think 538, which is supposed to be the Bible of polling for this country, had Hillary Clinton's odds at winning at something like 73% on the day of the election. Well, as you're probably aware, she's not, in fact, our president. That's uh, Donald Trump. And it's not just that. I mean, it happened again this year. We had races, legislative races, where a, a, a Democrat was supposedly up seven and ended up losing by three. That's not just a margin of error. That's a, a massive uh, margin of error. Uh, so we, we've seen this before, uh, but media, a lot of them just continue to obsess on it in a way that I don't really think is healthy for journalism or democracy. And, and is it simply because the Republicans are refusing to answer pollsters' questions and, and the pollsters didn't learn that lesson from 2016? Yeah, there's something to that. There's the notion of they're not reaching the right people if you're only reaching folks uh, via text or online, or if you're reaching them on their uh, cell phones, you're not getting everyone uh, an actual sample. They, they claim to have, uh, there's also the factor of some Trump supporters may not want to answer that way that they're voting for him. And so excuse it. They claim to factor all this stuff in, but the, you know, blah, 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 give all the excuses you want. The bottom line is they're wrong before they were wrong again. Uh, Biden was almost always up in every poll, at least by a little bit in Florida. As, as you know, he did not win. But the point I make is that uh, it's, it's lazy journalism. It's easy journalism. When, when media focus on this horse race coverage, I don't think it helps voters as much to know whether a candidate's up two or down three as much as it helps them to know what a candidate's policies are, where they stand, what their track record is, what is it that they've been proven to do. I just think this is lazy stuff that doesn't really advance any of the real issues. So where are you on the question of whether or not Florida is a red state right now? I think it is safe to say we are not uh, a swing state anymore. What, the way I say it, I've said it in my piece this week, is that we are not uh, deep red, but we're reliably red. And what I mean by that is that, uh, yeah, there are slightly more Democrats and there are Republicans in this state. Uh, yes, it's always close, but it almost always goes the Republicans' ways. They, I, and by the way, I don't think we can sell them short. I think they're just better at running campaigns. Uh, but when, whether you're talking about uh, cabinet races, governor's races, U.S. Senate races, or presidential races, I crunched the numbers for the last six rounds, and Democrats have only won one of those races. It's for agriculture commissioner, which I don't think most people really care about. And uh, Nikki Fried won that by 50.04%, I think it was. So if you have two teams, and one team's only winning one out of every 10 times, I don't think that's much of a rivalry. Well, speaking of Nikki Fried, uh, John Morgan, who's an attorney uh, uh, in your neck of the woods, uh, came out this week saying that Nikki Freed, because she did not support the statewide minimum wage amendment, his words, that, that that should disqualify her from running again for statewide office. How serious is, is the tension between Freed and, and uh, John Morgan? I think I would take it uh, pretty seriously. I think John Morgan's got as much or more clout than any other Democrat uh, in, in the statewide party. I mean, he posted arguably uh, the biggest victory in Florida with the minimum wage uh, amendment. And, and I think the part of what he was getting uh, at is that what freed uh, didn't do was she didn't embrace what's a really basic plank of uh, sort of the Democratic uh, Party. And I think she came in sort of at the tail end and said she supported it with about three days to go. But uh, what you're seeing here, Rob, is what Real Rogers talked about years and years ago. I'm not a member of an organized party. I'm a Democrat. This is a circular firing squad. They're always uh, feuding with each other. But generally, I think it points to a party that just hasn't had its act together really in the past 20 years in the Sunshine State. And Scott, one last question. If, if Florida of voters voted overwhelmingly to raise the minimum wage, which is a real progressive idea. Very. That they voted for President Trump. How do you hold those two ideas if, if Florida yeah. voters are willing to do both? 
Yeah, that, that's a great question. And the, 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 the dichotomy between those two things is interesting. A state that goes Trump, but also raises wages by upwards of 60%. As you notice, I think that's a vote of frustration. I think that is a vote. We are a low wage economy uh, throughout the state here in Metro Orlando. We are the lowest wage Metro in the entire United States out of the 50 largest. And uh, I think there's a general sentiment that the leaders of this state just haven't cared much about that. We have people who swab bathrooms, clean hotel rooms, fry chicken tenders, and they work 40 or 50 hours a week, and they still can't put a roof over their head. Uh, none of the people in power have really endeavored to address that problem. We've got affordable housing crises and other problems. So I think this was uh, voters saying, well, you know, you're not going to do anything about it. We're going to. And I think some of them understood there are some flaws. There's some drawbacks for small businesses. But uh, they also say, you know what, I should be able to put food on my table and have a roof over my head for my children. Scott Maxwell, it's always great to see you. Thanks for coming on Florida this week. You bet. Thanks so much.